How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today I want to share a little bit of information with you about differentials and specifically tuning each of the three different differentials in your four-wheel drive vehicle. With differentials, they can control not only the stability, but the amount of grip that your car has, but it's really important making sure that you have a decent balance between the front, center, and rear of the car for the conditions that you're running in. If you're running your car with really light diffs and it's a really high grip track, it's going to be really aggressive, difficult to drive, lack stability, and oversteer. If you're running too thick of diffs on a really low grip track, it's going to not be responsive or steer enough, but it's also going to be low grip and difficult to drive. So we'll start with the front of the car and we'll just do kind of a basic what a thin diff does, what a thick diff does. So as you go to thinner fluid in the front of the car, it's going to steer into the corner more and also steer more mid corner. So anytime that you are off throttle coasting into the corner, you're going to have more steering with lighter diff fluid. Now, when you transition from off throttle to on throttle, the thinner diff is going to pull less. It's going to want to diff out and not pull the rear of the car as hard. So thinner front diff is going to steer in more, but steer out of the corner less. The opposite would go if we went with thicker diff fluid. Thicker diff fluid is going to steer more precise, more stable and smoother getting into the corner. But then when you pick up the throttle, it's going to want to, the front's going to want to pull more, which can potentially make the rear of the car looser because it's going to steer more on throttle. So again, it's having the right fluid and balance for the amount of grip that you have. Typically higher grip, higher diff fluid, lower grip, lower diff fluid or lighter diff fluid. As far as the center goes, the center is basically controlling the overall drive of the car. It's kind of like your slipper clutch. So the lighter the fluid, the more that is going to slip. It's not technically slipping. It's actually just bleeding power to the front. But lower the fluid is usually better in lower grip conditions. Or if you're just really aggressive on the throttle, you like to blip and kind of stab the throttle, a lighter diff fluid is going to kind of calm that down. It's not going to want to light the tires up as much. Again, more for lower grip, you would want to run lighter diff fluid. As you go up in diff fluid, you're going to gain acceleration. You're going to have more equal tire wear front to rear, because if you run too light a diff fluid in the center, it's going to make the front tires kind of balloon up and spin the tires, which is going to make them wear a little bit faster. So thicker diff fluid though is going to accelerate harder, but if it's on a low grip condition, that extra acceleration is going to make the car a little bit loose. It's going to make it feel like the slipper clutch is really tight. The thicker center diff though can also make um, kind of the, the transition of on and off throttle through like long sweeping turns and also off throttle a little bit more stable with the thicker fluid. Thinner fluid, if it's low grip, you need it to kind of turn and rotate getting into the corner. The lighter fluid is going to help. On to the rear of the car. This, I think guys can sometimes get confused with and I think it also kind of depends on the car. Um, but in general, a lighter diff fluid is going to allow the car to have a little bit smoother steering getting into the corner, but then looser through the middle and exit of the corner. So if you feel like your car is kind of stalling mid corner and you need it to rotate a little bit more and then also continue to rotate when you pick up the throttle, you're going to want to go to a lighter diff fluid. If the car is loose on throttle, or tends to kind of wiggle or wash out on throttle like it's fighting itself because it's diffing out, it's because the rear diff is too light. If you go thicker in the rear diff, it's going to make it a little bit more aggressive getting into the corner, but mid corner and also when you pick up the throttle, it's going to just calm the rear of the car down 
and make it a little bit more locked in. So my standard setup for buggy is 10 in the front, 10 in the center, and seven in the rear. Uh, this is a pretty um, kind of just neutral setting that I use for like medium to higher grip tracks. If it's lower grip, I may go like 775. But typically I like a little bit thicker in the front than I do in the back. That gives it a little bit more precision getting in, rotates to the middle of the corner, and has good steering on exit. Now for Rhonda, she kind of likes it a little bit different. She likes a thinner front diff because she likes the car to steer into the corner a little bit more aggressive. And then she wants the car to have more grip and kind of bleed on exit of the turn. So she'll run a little bit thicker rear diff than front diff. So her kind of standard setup lately has been six in the front, seven in the center, and seven in the back. If it's really low grip, she'll go as low as three or four in the center, usually four, but sometimes as low as three. And again, you go to a really light fluid in the center, it just allows the car to bleed power, it's gonna have more grip, maybe a little bit less stability getting into the turn, but really be comfortable when you pick up the throttle. Um, with that light of a center diff fluid, it will tend to kind of smoke the center diff fluid a little bit more, um, wear your front tires a little bit more. But again, it can just kind of calm the car down, make it easier to drive. Too light in the center though can make it hard to clear jumps because again, you're losing a little bit of acceleration. The big thing is, again, balance front to rear. You don't want to have the front ever pulling so much more than the rear that it makes it out of balance, or the rear, if it's thick, pushing more than what the front is pulling, and again, making it out of balance. So typically, front to rear, you're gonna be fairly close. If it's really, really high grip and you're not worried about that stability on exit of the turn, then it may be possible. You're as high as, say, 15 in the front and as low as like five in the back, but that would be for an extremely high bite track, more of like a European style track where you're carrying a lot of momentum, not a lot of stop and go. Um, US style tracks, I feel like you need to have, again, a, a balance a little bit closer front to rear. Um, for me on truck, I normally run when I ran CVAs, I would run 10, 15, 7. Now that I run Universal's front and rear and truck, I normally run 15, 15, 10. And that's because with universals, there's a little bit less bind, which also makes on throttle uh, the diff action a little bit freer. So just something to consider. Um, universals, slightly thicker diffs. CVAs, a little bit thinner diffs. Um, on buggy, when I used to run uh, CVAs all the way around, I would run like 5, 7, 4. Um, like I said, now I run 10, 10, 7 with Universal's front and rear. Um, that seems to have a really good balance for most, most track conditions, especially if it's medium to high grip.